Welcome to the Show Me. In this one we're going to be looking at some of the relationships between the female viscera inside the pelvic cavity. And to get started, let's first of all just label some of the structures we can see. So we've got a pubic symphysis down here, bladder in there. This is our uterus of course. Uh, we've got a urethra coming down here. And we have a vagina in here. This is our rectum in here. And what else have we got? We've got our anal canal in here. It's for AC for that. So they're the main structures which are seen in this view. So let's clear away the labeling and let's start by looking at some of the important recesses that we find between the viscera. So what I'm doing now is just overlying the visceral peritoneum that would line these structures to identify a couple of important recesses. So we have a recess that we find in here between the bladder inferiorly and the uterus superiorly in this view. And this particular recess is known as the vesico-uterine pouch. And remember that the bladder in here is often referred to as the vesicle because vesicle anatomy just means fluid filled sac and there is no bigger fluid filled sac inside the pelvic cavity than the bladder so often when we use that term vesicle it's interchangeable with the term bladder and that's exactly what it means. You can see we've also got this peritoneum stretching over the uterus, it stretches over this part which is known as the fundus and either side we have a body and I'll just label this side. And as this peritoneum journeys back in here, into this dark space in here, let's draw and label that. That is our recto uterine pouch, also known as the pouch of Douglas. And that's the important one because often if there is an infection inside the abdominal pelvic cavity, fluid or pus will gather in this region and it can be palpated in a rectal examination. You can feel that pus gathering here. That's much more clinically important than this, this one in here. Okay, so there are a couple of uh, important recesses that we can identify. Let's clear that now, and let's focus on structures associated with the uterus, the vagina, uh, and the cervix. So, first of all, Let's go in green. As I mentioned before, let's just relabel this. This is the fundus. We have the body here. And really, that piece of peritoneum that stretches around here that we just drew on represents what we're going to term as, as the broad ligament. And we know that's subdivided into many smaller ligaments that you need to know. We can't see those here, so we won't go into those. We can see in here, we're going to use a different colour in blue just to highlight the cervix. So the opening of the cervix in this direction into the uterine cavity is known as the internal os or ostium. Likewise, there's an opening into the vagina as well. And this one is known as the external os or ostium. Its relationship with the vagina consists of two kind of cul-de-sacs, which we can highlight here in this gray color. We've got one in here and one in here. These are the fornices. We've got a posterior fornix and an anterior fornix. And there are lateral fornices as, as well. And certainly when a speculum is inserted into the vagina in this direction. Normally we can see the dome shaped opening of the cervix and the entire fornice surrounding the, uh, the, the cervix there and that's the view when a, a speculum is inserted. Of course we would be able to see fully around the dome shaped protrusion of the uh, external os of the cervix but on, of course, in this particular uh, photograph of the model, we can only really identify the posterior fornix and the anterior fornix. 
Right, so let's clear that away and now I want to talk about the relationship of the vagina and the cervix to, to the uterus. So what we want to do is create a few axes here to show the relationship. So first of all I'm going to use green to show the axis of the uterine body and that's going to go something like this. So this represents the axis of the uterine body. The next line I'm going to draw in, I'm going to put in in red, and this is going to represent the axis of the cervix. So the axis of the cervix is going to go a bit like this, without that squiggly bit, not that bit. The axis up here, so the axis of cervix. The next line which we're going to draw in blue is the axis of the vagina and that really just goes in this direction like this. So the blue one is axis of vagina. So these axes create an angle of anti-flexion and anti-version and the first angle is created between the axis of the uterine body and also the axis of the cervix. So we're going to use this grey colour now just to draw on the angle of antiflexion between the axis of the uterine body and the axis of the cervix. So that's between the green line here and the red line. So this one. going to be find somewhere we can just label it so this one here is going to be the angle of anti-flexion the second angle that we need to draw on is between the red line which is the axis of the cervix and the blue line which is the axis of the vagina and that is said to be an angle of antiversion and so we can draw that on like this so this one in here is the angle of antiversion so you can see here that the uterine body is leaning forward against the angle of the cervix and likewise the cervix is lying forward in relation to the angle of the vagina and so it creates two angles one between the uterine body and the cervix known as the angle of antiflexion and one between the axis of the cervix and the vagina known as the angle of antiversion and this is the normal anatomy but you might see um, some uh, of us are specimens that don't look quite like this. Okay, that pretty much wraps up uh, our whistle stop tour of some of the main relationships between the pelvic viscera uh, and some of the recesses. Bye for now.